Soren Kierkegaard from the Review of Theology and Philosophy, Volume 9, 1913-1914, by Richard Bell. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Hesemelte Verke, Band 5, Der Begriff der Angst, Ubersetz von Dr. Charles Schrempf, pages 174, 3M. Band 9, Anubung im Christentum, Ubersetz von H. Gottsched, pages 243, Jena, Dietrichs, 1912, M. 3.50. These two further volumes of the German translation of Kierkegaard, published by Dietrichs of Jena, contain two of his most characteristic works. They belong to different periods and are composed in different styles. The Bergriff der Angst belongs to the early period of Kierkegaard's literary activity, published in 1844 under the pseudonym of Vigilius Hofnitzes, it purports to be a strict psychological investigation of the relation of angst, anxiety, vague fear, it is difficult to find an exact English equivalent, to original sin. Sin itself, according to Kierkegaard, is not itself a subject of psychological investigation, nor can it be explained by any such investigation. It belongs to a different sphere altogether. The first sin, like every other sin, was the appearance of something qualitatively different from anything that preceded it, and no process of gradually leading up to it really brings us any nearer an explanation of it. Sin is distinct from everything else and must be treated in its own appropriate fashion. The attitude which sin demands is not that of scientific, parenthesis, psychological, in parenthesis, investigation but that of earnest endeavor to escape from it to treat sin in any other way is to mistake its nature this is very characteristic of kierkegaard as showing one his insistence on the gaps which human knowledge cannot bridge and his protest against the philosophy which too lightly pretends to bring all things into a unified system two his subjective conception of sin and of religious ideas generally, and three, his intense demand for earnest personal life. His study of angst is therefore not an explanation of sin, though the problem of sin is kept in view throughout, but only a study of a psychological background associated with it, both before and after its appearance. It is, as the translator says in his note at the end of the volume, in the investigation and description of angst, in its various forms and relations, in its biological significance, not in what it says regarding sin, that the real message of the book lies. There is no doubt that here Kierkegaard worked into an objectively written study some of his own deepest personal experience. The work is one of the best examples of his power of analytic reflection, his dialectic skill, his psychological insight, and, be it said, also his power of irony and sarcasm. Einubung im Christentum was published in 1850 under the pseudonym of Anticlimacus. It may be taken as the prelude to his break with the church. Its object is to set forth the claims of Christianity in their ideal height and difficulty. The church, pointing to its 1900 years of history, its success, and the wide diffusion of so-called Christianity in the world, has largely removed the offense of Christianity and made its acceptance easy. It has conformed religion to the world and confused the issue. Modern Hegelian philosophy and theology under its influence, with their pretended inclusion of the God-man in the system, is an attempt to conform Christianity to reason, and thus to make belief easy. Against these things this book was a protest, insisting that Christianity is ever to be a rock of offense, and to reason a paradox. 
in the possibility of offence in the paradox lies its real power almost more than any other of his writings this opens to us kierkegaard's own heart humble devout passionately aspiring and more than any other it shows us the pathos and moving eloquence which dwelt in him though in most of his writings restrained and hidden under irony and mockery this is a centenary year of the great danish writer and thinker he was born on fifth may eighteen thirteen we may hope that the anniversary will awaken a wider interest in his works and this german version of them will place them within the reach of many to whom they have hitherto not been accessible each volume contains a short explanatory note by the translator which is often of considerable assistance to the proper understanding of the book kierkegaard will amply repay study difficulty is and sometimes one-sided in some respects too his conceptions of christianity appear antiquated but that is largely only on the surface in many ways he is peculiarly modern and with all his wide roving fancy his pleasure in dialectic his endless analysis and reflection the intensely earnest appeal of soul to soul is never far away Montfrey, richard bell end of soaring kierkegaard from the review of theology and philosophy 1913-1914 by richard bell